Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Grant Hardy. Every earthquake starts the same way. There we were sort of um, mid-conversation, there was a, a little vibration, there was a little activity, and it just kept building. For Ness Murby, experiencing an earthquake is something that has stayed with them. There was a run on food, a run on stores. Um, there was also a, um, a difficulty in, in getting things started again. Um, families were separated, um, uh, things weren't running. And then there's the emotional effect on ourselves that um, uh, the, the trauma response and we had over 100, earth, uh, over 100 uh, aftershocks a day. Um, my guide dog was retired from post-traumatic uh, stress. Ness is aiming to pass on the lessons they learned in AMI's new emergency preparedness series. Everything can change in an instant when emergencies strike. I'm Ness Murby. I'm a Paralympian. I'm blind. I'm a disaster survivor. And I'm your host for this video series that is your guide to prepare and plan for natural emergencies in Canada. Ness, why do you think you were selected to host this series? I've been exposed to several types of um, natural disasters, from bushfires to um, floods to torrential um, rains, typhoons, earthquakes, and power outages that will affect when there's extreme weather differently, so whether it's extreme heat or extreme cold. If it hasn't occurred in, in your life before, the, the thought process just isn't there. You know, the idea of um, a power outage, what effect does that have? The idea of a storm warning, um, we don't need to panic, but certainly knowing the parameters makes a big difference. Think about what you may hear, like rushing water or roaring flames. Ness, how does the series take a look at emergencies from a blindness or partially sighted perspective? Something that I was aware of bringing to the table was familiarity with tactility. So this idea that, for example, just saying, learn how to turn off your main switch for your power creates a whole different realm of, of understanding and learning. So learning to label things and having things prepared an evacuation route that uses um, potentially a tactile map that you've worked out, um, labeling your grab and go bag items with um, different sized uh, bags, as well as uh, braille labeling, something that's going to work for you. It's important to plan for situations where you may not be able to rely on things you trust every day. Having an extra cane in an accessible place, an exit plan if you can't touch the walls, and thinking about how smells and sounds might change in emergencies are all part of that. It's really important to have some plans in place that allow you to be self-sufficient. Uh, waiting and relying on somebody else to help you out of an emergency situation shouldn't be the only resource you have. So I sat up in bed and as I did that, everything from my walls fell in and I, it just frozen with fear. I, it was several years ago now, probably about 20 years ago. My name is Laura Denton and I'm a senior director, creative integration at The Link. Laura, you're the producer behind the series. Tell me a little bit more about them. They're three to five minutes each, intended that you can watch them in any order of importance to you or what might be more relevant for your area that you live in. And we broke the content down after working with several contributing writers into first aid and emergency preparedness into three chapters. So risk, plan, and kit. So risk, know what to do in advance, plan, is this section, what can you do to ensure that you're ready in advance? So planning your evacuation. And then we have a kit chapter, which is our home kit, your grab and go kit, your first aid kit. What else do you need for your service animals? Uh, so those are the three chapters that we outlined the content. According to Blink's CEO, Mike Agarbo, a series like this was definitely needed. We, we did a bit of research. Uh, there was a lot of material uh, out there as far as emergency preparedness uh, uh, for the general community, but uh, finding material uh, and content that uh, was accessible uh, that uh, addressed the different types of uh, disabilities, uh, there wasn't a lot. So uh, we were happy to, uh, to bring it to life. Ness, what do you hope people take away from these? 
I'm hoping that it, it's going to spark some conversations because it is giving you a foundation for being prepared. It is bringing to light that these kinds of emergencies do exist and they, they happen regularly. So I think it just broadens our horizon. Uh, and rather than emergencies being a concept of something over there, it's something that is just part of the, the wonderful tapestry that is life.